Good morning, everyone. Um, I just thought I'd do a live in reply to the ABC story regarding Seduna, the cashless debit card, and the um, the shoes and the shoe shop situation. Okay, so bear with me as we get started. Now that Facebook has notified me that I'm doing a live, and um, I'll just give it a couple of minutes for a couple more people to come online, and uh, yeah. Let's let's get into this. So I'm going to open up the article. I'm going to go through it, break it down for you guys. I'm, I'm very critical of the responses of um, Ramsey and Anne Rustin, of course. Um, makes my blood boil, actually, their responses to this. But anyway, we'll get into that as I go through it. Just a little bit of a backstory for those that may not know. We had a parent that couldn't get shoes for the kitty and couldn't access the cash quick enough to be able to buy a second hand. Um, and that was able to be sorted and then um, a charity, the Homeless Collective, I'll, I'll put the link in afterwards, stepped up to raise funds for getting shoes and a podiatrist to Seduna. We thank Donna from that charity very much. We thank the original OP for um, alerting us to know what was going on in Sudan because it's a very closed shop. So um, let's get started. So cashless debit card out of step with Seduna families scrambling to buy school shoes after Trader fails. So like so many regional card areas, shops closed. That's just the way it is, right? Cash flow dries up. Cash flow is very important, especially in regional towns. Okay, that's my comment there. The loss of the last school shoes retailer in a remote South Australian town has exposed an unexpected problem with the contentious cashless debit card scheme and left families scrambling to address the children for school. 955 families to be precise. With the last sporting goods retailer closing down a fishing town um, in Sedona, a fishing town on the state's west coast one of the trial sites for the federal government's contentious cashless debit card CDC program, locals were left with no outlet for school shoes. People using the card said the shutdown would affect them more than others due to the restrictions on the card, making it difficult to buy secondhand items from the local classifieds. Under the CDC program, also known as INDU, 80% of an individual's Welfare payments are quarantined onto that card and cannot be used for alcohol or gambling products. So what part of alcohol gambling are shoes? Now, we go, we go on this all the time. So it's aimed at reducing substance abuse, but card users say it's created difficulties buying secondhand goods. Yeah, like they don't. Or sellers put up no Indu because they don't want to wait two, three, four days. They don't want to hand over all their personal and private information to Indu, so the person has to beg and get permission to get an extra 20 or 30 or 40 dollars you know released right from what was their money but indu owns it now don't forget that indu owns that money so it's uh the store was where school shoes could be bought locally while there's still places in seduna to buy new shoes the stock is not appropriate for school and the local op shops only have a small selection all right um indu user and dunn said the shop closer came Closure came when she needed shoes for her daughter. She was starting her first year of school and it was a loss. Didn't know what to do. You know, she eventually found the money. That got sorted uh, for a pair of shoes on sale on social media marketplace. And said that living on the card was not easy. No, it's not easy for these people. People say, just go buy online. Well, that's no good because you can't get them for two weeks through postage. Then they get here and a lot of time they don't fit. But the other barrier with buying online is most places want PayPal for payment and you can't pay using PayPal, right? <laughs> you know, they end up, you know, people put shoes that don't fit up on the Seduna buy sell page where people on Indu just don't have access because it's too complicated to be able to get access to the cash to be able to buy and sellers don't want to wait. And that's fair enough. And sellers don't want to give Services Australia or Indu, their private information. And that's fair enough. It's called a right to privacy. Every Australian citizen is supposed to have that, right? So um, a charity stepped in, okay? Um, they saw 
through our page and after hearing about the issues caused by the shop closure the national homeless collective a melbourne-based charity stepped in started a fundraiser to get shoes for school children quote we managed to fundraise about two thousand dollars in the first 24 hours as well as collect shoes in melbourne to take over as well All right said donna stoltenberg the charity's founder and chief executive we're hoping to get the kids good quality shoes and they deserve it too. They should have access just like anybody else in this country. And it shouldn't fall to charity to provide it. Ms. Stolzenberg said that once the shoes arrived in Sedona, they would be distributed through local churches and youth groups. We're hoping to also bring a podiatrist to make sure that the shoes are fitted properly and that if there are any other underlying issues with the children's feet. While everyone in Sedona will be affected by the store's closure, Ms. Stolzenberg says the charity will prioritise prioritise families on the CDC program. Thank you very much, Donna, for that. You know, <coughs> these are families that have been locked out of being able to purchase secondhand shoes or buy them from other places. And that is right. And we're in the we're in the 21st century. Where in the world, right? Well, not where in Australia does can a community be cut off from being able to buy basics? cashless debit card regions that's where so we're looking to give shoes to at least a couple of thousand children so we need to make sure the cohort is looked after first all right so the card is working as intended okay here we go Sedona's local MP Rowan Ramsey is a supporter of the cashless debit card and says it's working as intended my comment here is yes to impoverished people right have them forcibly contracted to a private company where they're not protected by australian laws they have no way where to turn to and they don't own that money indu has been given that 80 percent of that person's social security payment they've just been given it treasury's just handed that money the social security budget over to a private entity to control that is called the government shirking its responsibility to the Australian people to manage an effective social security safety net as they give it all away. <coughs> and on top of that, they're paying people, people like Indu, right, around about the $12,000 mark per person. That figure will drop if they get it national, but it doesn't matter. They're paying a private company money per person and then on top of that, they're handing over our social security budget to that company who are not accountable to you, me, the Senate, the government, right? And least of all to the cardholder that they have forcibly contracted to them without their consent. Big issues, okay? So, of course, Ramsey says, you do get 20% of your income in cash. It's your opportunity to manage that. Mm, okay. <coughs> So say you're on youth allowance and you get, what is it? I don't know, $60 a fortnight in cash. That's got to last you a fortnight. If you're on um, base rate, I'm talking base rate job seeker here, you know what I mean? $114 a fortnight in cash. And if you're on disability support pension, because don't forget, there is people in this town, right? And I can tell you how many there are exactly on the um, the cashless uh, debit card that are on disability, um, and you know this is disgusting. You know, saying, "Oh, it's your opportunity to manage your twenty percent." Where do they get off? So, in a town like Sedona, there's not a lot for the kids to do. Most of it's controlled through the local sporting club. Okay. Uh, you can't use your card to pay for netball fees or dance for your kids, right? Your fees for sports. You can't even buy a bottle of water at the sporting club because the cashless debit card is banned, right? So things like that chew up cash. You can't pay for daycare in most places because people think that it's being paid. It's not. They end up with a big debt. And then they've got to try and use all their cash allowances to catch up. We've had lots of parents who've been through that road. You can't pay for public transport. There's so many things that that cash gets chewed up by. 
right? The bills, um, for instance, um, that are not covered, certain insurance payments, or if your rent's not covered properly because whatever, all sorts of circumstances in which that 20% is gobbled up, okay? This crap about opportunity to manage that from Ramsey it shows clearly he doesn't give a stuff. He's not listening. They don't listen, right? So, um, Mr. Ramsey said the card could be used to purchase goods, including shoes, from any online retailer except eBay. Bullshit. Sorry, I call him out on that. All right, from a sports shop, you're not buying used goods. You're buying new goods, and those goods are available on the internet, he said. In fact, it's probably cheaper than they were buying it locally, quite frankly, because we know local retail is being seriously undermined by buying online. So let me respond to that, Mr. Ramsey. So you're encouraging more people in your town to buy online, which further cripples the small businesses that you have in your town, which causes them to close down. But for the regular person who is not on the cashless debit card, they have the ability to go online, buy online, anywhere they want, because when it comes up to checkout, PayPal, bingo, they can pay. And it'll direct, and if they don't have any money in their PayPal account, it'll direct straight from their bank account. Cashless debit card holders in Seduna, all 955 of them, don't have that option. So he can get off his high horse. It shows that he doesn't care about local, you know, support local business. He couldn't give a stuff, right? It gets worse. So bear with me. Mr. Ramsey said this. People on welfare, including the cashless debit card, manage their income correctly, taking into consideration available subsidies, then they should manage. Well, excuse me, Mr. Ramsey, but you don't even know how your own card works. Because you gave 80% of those people's funds, their, their legal, financial, fiscal worth, you gave that to Indu to control and manage on their behalf. So you've taken away the ability for all of those people to manage their income forcibly. They didn't ask for, for this to happen to them. You took that away, you gave the money to Indu and Indu and Services Australia make the decisions. The person on the cashless debit card doesn't have a say in those decisions and they have to fight tooth and nail and beg and and, and be humiliated by staff who go, oh, no, we can't let you have access to that because we think it's too expensive. You shouldn't be spending your money on that. And that's in regards to furniture for a bedroom suite, for Christ's sake. So, you know what I mean? People should not be in this situation. And most of the people that are impacted by the cashless debit card had bugger all problems with their credit ratings, their rents were um, time they budgeted their money they could move money around and they would not be in the situation because they have the same freedom as everybody else to just hop online as he says you know what I mean and so he's surprised that they the charity has to step in in that case why are you surprised you are with a government that is dismantling our social welfare sector our social security budget privatizing our social security to every tom dick and harry who wants a contract paying lots of money to those people circo serena rosso you know indu you know all these places taking their big bites out of our social security budget and destroying people and deliberately keeping the rates so low that's not livable right anyway and taking away the ability for people on social security who can budget the best because they can juggle their money around the best to make sure their kids don't miss out, right? And he's surprised that a charity stepped in. The reason why charities are stepping in is because since Abbott came in and we had Turnbull, now we have Morrison, right? The LNP neoliberal um, policies are to... Get rid of the social services sector. Let's go back a 100 years and we'll dump the most of it onto the charities. The charities, the food banks, right, this charity, the homeless charities, all the charities are overloaded with people who can't survive. And in March, it's going to, excuse me, the shit's going to hit the fan, right? 
because when they drop that new start rate, job seeker rate back to $40 a day, right? And parenting payments that we're receiving, that COVID supplement drop as well. And, you, and you've got 1.3 million people unemployed. You've got nearly 2 million people underemployed. You're going to find out certain people who've never been unemployed are going to start losing their homes, becoming homeless, right? Attending food bank more. This is a transfer of wealth to private corporations the, to control the poor population, right? But leaving the charities to pick up the damage, right, in the social sector. Social security is supposed to do just that. Give our society social security, right? It, is, it was brought about as an economic stabiliser to make sure that businesses had adequate cash flow to open their doors, pay their bills, employ people on the ground. Not big business, little business, okay? Because we learned big lessons throughout the 1929 to 1933 depression, right? The Great Depression, where we saw the transfer of wealth to the top 10% and everybody else collapsed, right? You can't think the Dickinson... Victorian era of the charities picking up the slack and doing the job of the government is not good enough. It's not acceptable. And this is the year 2021. And he's wondering why charities stepping in. You know why? Because charities have a heart, mate. Right? They have a social conscience. They care about fellow Australians. Okay? They don't want to see any kids in this country going without shoes or anything. That's why charities are doing their best at the same time, of course. Let's see what cuts they try and push to the charities this time around during the May budget, like they tried to cut before COVID, remember? They tried to cut 50% of food bank, remember? Don't let these bastards off the hook. This is a wealth transfer to private mm -hmm. companies. All right? So let's keep going with this because I got a bit off track there, but I... You understand why? A spokesman for Social Services Minister, Anne Ruston, said the store's closure would equally affect Sojourner residents with or without the card. No, it doesn't. Because other people can buy anywhere they want, right? And they can use PayPal. They can do direct instant transfers from their card. You know what I mean? They can just transfer from their bank account to somebody else's bank account, right? Banking online, right? Yeah, unless the business is improved, approved, cashless debit card holders can't do that. So the cashless debit card account can be used to purchase products outside of Sedona region as well as online, the spokesman said. In fact, it can be used at more than 900,000 merchants around Australia to purchase any goods with the exception of alcohol and gambling products. Mm. How snide is that, right? And we already know you can buy alcohol. We know, you know, I'm not, I'll be checking in on our friend from WA to see if she can buy bread and milk yet instead of UDLs, because in her town she can only buy UDLs. She can't use it at the post office, she can't use it to buy petrol at the service station, and she can't use it to buy bread and milk at the IGA but she can buy an UDL at the IDA. Go figure. We've got plenty of instances where the card is used to buy alcohol. All right, so that's a, you know, yeah, in the regions where the card is, right, they've worked hard to make sure that the posh, more expensive pubs are the um, mixed merchants that you can use the card to go and eat a meal at. Whereas, you know, the good old little local down the road that was doing the $10 schnitzel is a banned merchant. Because how dare you get a cheap hot meal on your cashless debit card? This ikes me because the segregation, and this is what it is, segregation. It is financial apartheid. No matter what you say, it is apartheid. And it needs to be out there. They can sidestep and they can try and blame the recipient as much as they like. The recipient does not have control of their finances. They have control. They don't even have proper control of their 20% because when Indu fails to pay the rent on time, where do you think people have to scrabble money from? Their $200 allowance that they get once every 28 days and their 
all right there's plenty of people out there having to use that money to pay room rentals or to pay car insurances or car repayments right and bills you know this is not good enough and to try and blame the recipient you notice they won't take responsibility for their own policy hmm well, when you've got Morrison as your leader and he doesn't take responsibility for anything, what do you expect, right? And to try and constantly blame people, that's, that gets me, that really does. And I wanted to say about it, when I read it, I thought, right, I'm going to do a live about this. It's not good enough, right? These people have not asked to be treated like this. No Australian in this country should be segregated, denigrated and treated like this. Simple as that. This, we're going to divide Australia up and we're going to sell off. Remember Abbott's first announcements, Australia's for sale. None of us ever imagined it would be our kids, our parents, and even in some cases our grandparents being sold, right? And um, this is crazy, do you know what I mean? So I think people who are on the card need to start looking at legal avenues um, into their loss of protections under consumer law, their privacy rights. People start talking about the legals of this and start getting onto lawyers and asking and say, I didn't consent to this, all right? Um, the government only had a notice of um, no action for the first trial of the card. So how does that stand when they extended the card in Seduna after the first 12 months? Um, and all the other regions, which are like Hinkler's, the fourth trial site. Do you know what I mean? People need to start getting upset about this. And for cardholders, you need to make sure that every time they stuff up your card or an Indu worker says no when you need to access cash or the card declines and it stuffs you up, make the necessary complaints. Pick up the phone to the Australian Financial Complaints Authority. Contact your welfare rights community organisations in your state, right? Come out on our pages and tell us what's happening. Don't shut up, right? They're getting away with selling off our people to private entities, creating an apartheid state, which is illegal under international law. And we don't need to see this happening. And combined with the cuts to Social Security, right, and the way that they have demonised everybody on Social Security, whether you're a pensioner or not, you know, um, everybody needs to stand together on this, you know, pensioners all the way down, because this is your grandkids' lives, this is their future, if you don't stand up, right, and um, we don't want it, it's spreading like a cancer, and in March, another 23,000 people risk being I say I use the word tricked out of their basics card and that is protected under law right into going onto the cashless debit card you know what I mean um so yeah please people you you need to act and um because this is getting out of hand I, I was it ate at me all last week that you know all, all week this is just the fact that I can't even imagine what it's like to not be able to go and buy a pair of shoes, right? Anywhere, because we have shoe stores and we have department stores where I live. But places like Kalanara are very limited. Um, I admit they have more than what, they actually have a little bit more than what Seduna does. Seduna is very restricted and most of their stores, the card declines that constantly. You know, um, so... Yeah, you know, I'm just checking something here um, for you. That's all right. Yeah, it's, I'm just frustrated as anybody would be. I'm not impressed with the replies from the minister's office. Of course, telling people who don't have control of 80% of their income to manage their money better is a bit of a slap in the face, isn't it? You know, isn't that disgusting? You took away the control of that income. 
and you gave it. And, and, and let's play the neoliberal taxpayer's lie, my taxpayer's money lie, and let's put it in that framework, right, and say the government took 80% of taxpayers' money from a social security recipient and gave it to a private company called Indu with no recourse. You know, they took it from Treasury and they're just giving it away. How does that make you fail? For the, for the, it's my tax dollars, man, out there. How does that make you feel? That the government took your tax dollars and rather than help people properly and, and allow them to be able to live with dignity and access things normally, right, and be able to buy fresh fruit and veg, jams and spreads at the local market like Seduna has instead of $5 a loaf in Seduna. Um, and the inflated other prices in the other regions, the people on cards can only buy expensive foods, processed foods, right? They can only shop with Woolies, Coles and Aldi. They can't get bang for their buck. And those people who moan about their my tax dollars, well, your tax dollars are making somebody very, very wealthy, but it's not helping families on the ground. It's not keeping people and their kids with shoes on their feet, which is what it's supposed to do. That's what it's supposed to do. We're not supposed to return to the days of tent cities, which we're seeing now, with kids running around with no shoes and dirty clothes because people haven't got the facilities or the money to be able to afford things. Where job seekers are trying to stay with a roof over their head, but they can't afford anything you know what I mean we cannot return to that sort of situation and we are seeing it all over the country but to blame the card holder for lack of budgeting schools this comes down to Anne Ruston's it's a fantastic literacy tool yeah for Hindu and their money making schemes and their delays on when money comes through and when money goes missing you know what I mean and when you've got people who have money missing every fortnight it's a great money-making scheme. It's working exactly as it's intended to asset strip the poorest and most vulnerable people in our community and our lowest paid workers, our students, our youth, our elderly, our sick and our disabled. That's what it's doing. Okay, it's working as planned, a wealth transfer, and it will cripple our economy along the way because of the cost. The cost to the taxpayer, if we're working on the taxpayer neoliberal bullshit, either way, it's going to cost billions, right? Don't forget, Basics Card's been going for 13 years and it's cost $1.9 billion. And what difference has it made? Do our First Nations peoples have nice houses with electricity and clean water in their communities? No. They have dirty water, no water, poisoned water, no electricity, right? Several families trying to live in a run-down house that is falling to bits, right? Um, their health care is poor and their schools are falling apart and oh, I could, you know, I could go on and on and on. So what benefit did the basics card do to the Northern Territory? Apart from, again, Indu controlling 50% of the money albeit under the control of the government, not the control of themselves. That's the difference between the two cars. Indu gets to independently not only control the money, but own the money for the CDC, um, 80%. And in some cases, 100%. We need to start, you know, we need to fight this and we need to really fight it really hard. Australians do not deserve to be treated this way ever. We are all supposed to be equal under law and this isn't it all right i'll get off because i'm just i've had a gut full you know what i mean dan's just put an article here basics card in shepherd and reveal shepherd and revealed to have the highest homeless rate in victoria yeah it seems to be a pattern doesn't it you know what i mean homelessness follows the cards because when you can't pay your rent on time 
because of the delays caused by Indu. Indu's controlling both these cards, you know what I mean? Unless you're lucky enough to have Santa Pay, which not all private owners do. And not all private owners accept BPay or real estates. When you start stuffing around with the foundation, which is someone's home, their rent, where they live, once they've been kicked out of that place, the black mark on their rental history is for life. You know what I mean? And then they can't get a house. And um, it becomes a barrier. It becomes a barrier. You know what I mean? You know, so um, I'm just reading something here. So, a Keller May, I was in Adelaide, a woman and women's and children's hospital, checking my pay. It was payday. Stuck with a sick baby. I checked my account. Like $980 was missing. I found it had been transferred Indu to Indu. My Indu card was 10 hour drive away back in Sedona in my post box. Indu would not transfer any of the money besides $200 to live off for two weeks until I could get home to activate my card and they have access to my disability. No choice. All choices taken away. 908. I, did you, I hope you got that back eventually. Because we did have another lady who had money and it was $942 and that was stolen Indu to Indu. And they gave her the runaround. And um, I spoke about it at the Senate inquiry. Uh, in the meantime, they, they quietly slid it back into her bank, you know, a week or so beforehand without even her knowledge. But they tried to, you know, get out of it by saying that giving her the name of the card holder that had done it and all these excuses that, you know, that the card had um, been used to buy a phone, in a phone shop in Harvey Bay um, and um, all this other stuff. And they were trying to suggest that, um, she was lying about the money being stolen. She didn't know the other card holder. So I hope you got that money back. Um, yeah. It's, see, and people can't just not... You know, you, when you're on a payment, you are reliant on that money being in the bank, whatever it is, right? When it's not there, it affects all of your bills. It affects your ability to buy food for your children. You may have run out of everything and you're desperate to get to the shops and you've got no money, right? Be stuck in a hospital and then not having any money in Adelaide. Um, I mean, I've heard of some of the stories of, again, with accommodation. When you're visiting a hospital, you can't stay out of the accommodations around the place, whether it be Adelaide, whether it be Perth, and whether it be Bundaberg going to Brisbane, you know what I mean? Uh, it's ridiculous. And, it, and we have to stop this, people. Please, we need to get people educated and people need to start spreading this. Like, let's spread this information like the cancer, the card is, and start getting public support behind us. Throughout the next few months, we're going to be calling for volunteers in each state to help out with doing some stuff, right, to try and bring this to its knees. We need to change the government to do that, and we can only do that. If you guys can help as well, it's time to change this government. And otherwise, they'll sell it all off. They'll sell us all off. And, I mean, they're attacking our Medicare, right? There's so many things now that you have to pay for, certain blood tests. But, and if you have a procedure done, you now you're up for your own, for the band-aids, the, the bandages cost and the sutures cost, which they didn't tell you. you know, a lot of, yeah, they put some nice medicines on mm -hmm. PBS, but there's a lot. On the meds, on, on the PBS, all of a sudden, especially mental health, um, drugs and things like that that people need and cancer drugs, right? Um, yeah, it's time for a change. They're crippling us, and they're robbing us all blind, whether you're working or not, right? It's just a grab on everything. You know, they're not supporting our services. They're not supporting the people. They are shirking their responsibility as they sell it all off to their mates. And, um, you know, um, yeah, people in South Australia need to let Rex Patrick know about this. So if you're on the card in South Australia, you have the choice of ringing Senator Rex Patrick if you have problems with the card 
and it would be a good idea to educate him on that anyway so that he doesn't think things were as simplistic as the minister will have him because i had an argument about him with rents oh but you can pay indu uh, you can pay b pay i said not everybody takes b pay but he wouldn't have a bar of it because the minister had told him you can use b pay you know what i mean he just didn't get underst or understand how anybody could be made homeless um he didn't understand he could, oh i got frustrated because he couldn't i couldn't seem to make him understand what was going on so for south australians contact senator rex patrick he will only deal with south australians and let him know but also contact um senator uh, mariam smith as well or penny wrong you know what i mean senator penny wong um they are against the card and they will help you they are federal senators only federal senators and mps can help you okay um state it's a good idea to talk to state members and let them know what's going on for sure because they need to know what's going on at the ground level in their state but they can't do anything this is a federal issue federal policy and your state representatives even if they do speak up there's nothing that they can do about it only your federal representatives can do something about it so remember that okay don't have a go at your state but they should be speaking up this is the thing because the policy affects people on the ground and really from councillors to state representatives need to start speaking up and saying this is hurting my community this is hurting my constituents this is taking money away from our small businesses this is destroying our markets right this is destroying our fundraisings and and all sorts of other things and, and most importantly it's destroying the well-being of our people the well-being the mental health the financial st the sense of um uh, what do you call it the sense of well-being is being destroyed so um yeah you guys know how to vote the next election you know who voted for the card simple if you voted for the card we won't vote for you will we don't vote for somebody who voted for the card no matter how much of a hero you think they are, even though they're, they're not. You know what I mean? I, I come across so many One Nation supporters that are so blind. And it's like, why do you support a, 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 why do you support a party that turns around and says you shouldn't have any rights in this country? You're not entitled to have any rights if you're a parent or disabled or sick or a student or studying or only working part-time. Get off. All those representatives should be standing up for all of your legal rights under law and human rights under domestic and international law at all times. Not saying, no, 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 we want to take your rights away. You know what I mean? So, um, I'm going to get off. But I thought, there's my reply to this and a lot more, of course. You know, a lot of small regional towns are struggling with high unemployment. Now we have high homelessness, right? Especially in the regions where the cash just debit card is. And then on top of this, the statement from the minister's office saying, telling everybody, well, just go buy online. It's not that easy. It's disgusting. And when we go right back to the very beginning of the first trial in Seduna, one of the first problems that arose, plus size clothing for women. Because most regional towns don't have a plus size clothing shop. All right? So therefore, people were used to buying their clothing, because the second hand shops don't have it. They were used to buying their clothing from eBay and overseas cheaper, better quality clothing for their underwear. All right? Their, you know, and their clothes and the cashless debit card shut that down and then if you wanted to you know buy something from an online company you've got to send the photograph of what you're buying right and all the information of the company to get that company approved for online which meant we got we had a bit of a whinge about this of course why should somebody be having to send Indu staff 
or services Australia staff a copy or photograph of a bra that you want to buy because it fits you better and it doesn't cost okay put it this way overseas on eBay $40 posted boom going Australia $160 for this for not even the same quality you know that's the prices I hear from from women that are stuck in that situation yeah anyway I suppose Twiggy could turn around and say well you can buy um, RM Williams shoes with your card as if any card holder could afford six hundred dollars for a pair of boots you know and they still wouldn't fit school curriculum anyway okay guys I'll talk to you guys later see ya